what was the process that you went from, okay, it works, someone's going to pay us, to now 30,000 people are on board. How did you get there? So yeah, it, it goes back to that term I used earlier of being cerebral. I, I think for me, that is one of my mantras and kind of everything we do where we're trying to operate as closely to the truth or as closely to reality as we possibly can. I think in general, it's really easy to kind of convince yourself that things are one way, oftentimes like whatever way is most convenient for you, when the reality can oftentimes be pretty different. So early on, objectively, your your product is probably going to suck, right? If it's not something that is taking over the world overnight, it's probably not going to be a great product. And being real about how and why it's not is how you can then start iterating on it and making it better. So for us early on, like to give you an example. So, so right now when you join Javelin, we have a bunch of different tiers of skill levels. So we have beginner direct training sessions, which teach people how to uh, play volleyball. Then we have rec games, high rec, intermediate, high intermediate, advanced. Our rec games are just for fun. Anyone can play and join. But as you go higher than that, we have a tryout system where okay. if you're not playing at the level of the game that you're at, you could fail tryouts and then you can't book at that level again for the next X days or X months. We okay, also have quiz that players have to pass. Hang on a sec. Let's let's yeah. stop here for a second. How much volleyball do you play? When we first launched, I was playing nearly every day. <laughs> and then my ankles and knees started going. So I'm playing once a week now. Okay. But were you a volleyball fan? Did you play competitively before? <laughs> What's your background in volleyball? Yeah. So I played growing up. I didn't play competitively though. And that's why I fit this kind of weird middle ground where I was too good to play with people who didn't really play volleyball, but I wasn't good enough to play with the best players. Volleyball is a rally sport. And in the category of rally sports, skill level is more important than other sport categories because players need to be on a similar level for rallies to take place. We kind of identified that early on as a big problem that we wanted to build towards, but we just had to slowly find out what worked for skill level. Okay. So that's, I want to point this out you really got nitty gritty and you went and solved the problems for the people playing volleyball. You experienced a bit of it before and that's how you came up with this system of tryouts and the recreational, et cetera. Okay, so I think that's gonna be one big secret that I want all founders listening to this to take away is that Justin really went in there and worked with the problems, understood, gained some insight. I have no idea what a rally sport is. That just is total French to me. But because Justin knows that, he can adjust his product offering and build from there. All right, first phase done. You got that onboarding process, which is going to be important. Then what other things did you do to get to product market fit? Yeah, so fundamentally, we're a consumer company, which means we kind of play by different rules than I think a typical B2B company would. So when we were initially launching, we used some paid, for example, right, just to get our name out there. Uh, we worked with some podcasts. We would post on different social media pages. We would work with different courts to get our name out there. We did that for about the first year to kind of build the initial player base. And because again, our product was bad initially. Like it, it was a legitimately bad product. I can't sure. stress that enough. It's just people were desperate to do something after COVID that they were okay with playing in our bad volleyball games because it's better than nothing. I love it. So we, we spent, yeah, we spent that time kind of figuring things out. And then eventually we got to the point where kind of word of mouth took over. Right? We no longer needed to be using pretty much any marketing. This was, again, at the about, about eight, nine months of operations. So we could turn off all of our paid, uh, start transitioning to more long-term marketing. For us, that was really the sign that we kind of had found that product market fit is we had that sticky player base who were also telling other people about them. About 100%. Us. Let's let's pause here for a moment and, and yeah. break this apart for all the founders listening. In the beginning, I always say you should never pay for users. Flat out, don't pay for users unless you are testing users, unless you're testing messaging. And that's what you did. So you use different forms of acquisition. You start off with a little bit of paid. You got the players to come on board, the initial early adopters, but your product fundamentally has got network effects built in. The more people that use the product, the better product's going to be. And because you did that and you optimize for that, eventually it takes on a life of its own and people are referring other people because I'm going to guess because it's a rally sport, it's a team sport, co-ed, hey, you should join this, join our game, et cetera. And that's how you found that sweet spot and things start taking off on their own. How'd I do? That was very good. Okay. And yeah, it was actually one feature that allowed us to find product market fit, but that was a feature where we started, it started breaking once a lot of people started using it. And we actually still have some headaches around it, but it was this auto sign up feature. So essentially all of our games are weekly games. They're all weekly volleyball games. 
right? We'll have like, for example, a Friday intermediate 8 to 10 p.m. game. We turned on, we created this auto sign up feature where someone could turn it on to automatically add them each week. And then they could cancel it at any time and, you know, cancel their attendance whenever. But we just wanted to do this just to make sign up easy for players each week. Oh, yeah. And we're like, if you know, it'll maybe turn volleyball into your Friday night thing. You turn it on and then, oh, I play volleyball on Fridays. The unintended benefit is that it also made it so that everyone else at the game was regulars. And that's really the piece that players kind of fell in love with is nice on the second game. When they came back, they would see all the same faces from the week before, or a lot of them. I mean, to, to date, I think about 93% of players at the average javelin game are regulars Wow, where you go to a game and you see the same people each week and you create these really great relationships from just playing volleyball with these same people every week. And uh, that for us was actually what allowed us to find uh, the really crazy stickiness that you need for, for PMF.